30 million years ago, a monster roamed the landscape. Well, we're talking about one of the most ferocious animals that probably ever walked the earth. This was the biggest beast to live in North America since the dinosaurs. Look at the size of that skull. Look at all those teeth in there. There is no animal like this anywhere. See, if this thing's biting over the front, but this creature's true character has baffled the world's best paleontologists. It might look like a pig, but it's more vicious than a grizzly bear. One thing is for sure, this beast was so frightening, some call it the pig from hell. Prehistoric America, 30 million years ago, the dawn of the Oligocene Epoch. The earth was cooling, and as temperatures dropped, the landscape began to change. In what would someday be Nebraska, Wyoming, and South Dakota, tropical forests gave way to a radically different environment. As forests disappeared, animals had to adapt to a dangerous new world of wide open spaces with nowhere to hide. A world where there was only one way to survive, run for your life. Camels become adapted for open country, horses become adapted for open country, and you have to be able to escape your predators by being fast runners. As prey animals became harder to catch, predators also had to change. In this arms race, it took speed and jaw power to stave off starvation. There were nimravids, cat-like creatures with saber teeth, which could kill with one quick bite. And the fearsome hyena don with its lethal jaws. There was another animal stalking these deadly grasslands. Scientists call it the entelodont. More than a meter at the shoulder, weighing in at 270 kilos, entelodont was the Oligocene's number one menace. Entelodonts, I mean, they were really bad looking animals that only a mother could love. If you were another animal on the landscape, I mean, you saw one of these things, I think you'd go in the opposite direction. Paleontologists have always looked at the entelodont's sheer power with reverence, but its behavior is one of evolution's most puzzling enigmas. Was it a pure hunter, or did it use its battle tank body simply to protect itself from other predators? Between the biting and the chewing, you wanted to stay away from the business end of this animal. Just look at it. Look at the size of that skull. Look at the, all those teeth in there. There is no animal like this anywhere. Entelodont's name means perfect toothed. Its teeth were driven by a perfect system, which gave this creature a ferocious bite. Its jaw power came from two massive cheekbones that leveraged the muscles and supercharged them, driving the deadliest jaws of its time. Jaws that could open 90 degrees and could clamp down harder than a hippo's or a crocodile's. This beast was bioengineered to bite. But what it was eating and why remains a mystery. Entelodonts have no modern relatives, no modern close relatives. So it makes it a challenge for a paleontologist to figure out how they made their living. What would an animal with such an enormous flange on its face, such enormous teeth, be eating? What was it doing? 
entelodont fossils first caught the attention of scientists in the 1850s. They decided it was a bear-like creature. But then grooves in the teeth suggested that entelodonts were digging for plant roots, meaning that they literally ate like pigs. Today, scientific analysis has confirmed that the entelodont's closest living relative is the pig. But while this creature has some pig-like features, scientists have struggled to place it in any one category. In many ways, they're analogous to pigs, but they're also analogous to bears. They're also analogous to hyenas. Nobody's thought about these animals before. And there's no animal alive today that is a direct comparison to entelodonts. The lifestyle of entelodonts has provided paleontologists with difficult questions. A new generation of scientists is looking at the entelodont to determine why this plant-eating animal had teeth like a carnivore. Entelodont jaws held four different kinds of teeth, canines, incisors, premolars, and molars at the back. The back molars were ideal for grinding vegetation, but it's hard to imagine that the entelodonts would have needed such lethal canines and incisors just to grab plants. Then, in 1993, a discovery suggested that entelodonts were chewing on much more than plant roots. We've got a set of vertebrae here. You can see the neural spines are evident. For over 15 years, this quarry site in the badlands of South Dakota provided paleontologists with a multitude of fossils from the animals that shared in Telodont's world. Right. There it is. First time out in 33 million years, huh? 30 million years ago, this place was a watering hole crowded with rhinos, camels, and early horses. Scientists also found one of the largest collections of entelodont bones in the history of North America. So many that they dubbed the site the Big Pig Dig. Fossil hunters also found the prehistoric equivalent of fingerprints, entelodont teeth marks, all over the bones of the biggest and fastest animals of its time. Well, these represent bite scars along the dorsal margin of this rhinoceros skull. Well, what could make these marks? If we take an entelodont skull, we see that the premolars are widely spaced apart. So when we lay that over the top here, lo and behold, they're matching up quite well, suggesting that this animal is at least a likely candidate for uh, biting through the top of the skull of this rhinoceros. The dig presented key evidence that entelodonts didn't just eat plants, suggesting that they were less like modern pigs and more like fearsome prehistoric predators. If we look at the front of the mouth of an entelodont, it's got a very strong bite that's interlocking. The teeth come together like that. The tips of the teeth don't touch each other, so it's not really specialized for cropping vegetation. In addition to interlocking, the front teeth angle slightly forward, giving entelodonts the ability to grab and nip, something plant eaters don't need, but meat eaters do. The incisors and the canines would have been perfectly capable of tearing a bite out of a carcass. But dentition isn't the only reason paleontologists believe the entelodont was a dedicated carnivore. Under Wyoming's rugged terrain, scientists are finding more and more bones bearing the signature of entelodont's powerful jaws. Across the Great Plains of North America, 
scientists are investigating a prehistoric pig. Entelodont has the teeth and jaws of a fierce predator, but its long, thin legs and cloven hooves suggest it might not be a very good hunter because it couldn't use them to grab prey. Who was this beast, nicknamed the pig from hell? One veteran fossil hunter believes he's found the answer. I look at him as an attack predator, that he was top of the line predator, just like the lion is today in Africa, and just like T-Rex was in the late Cretaceous. Paleontologist Kent Sundell has great respect for this creature's power to kill. At Wyoming's White River Formation, he's found what he thinks is ultimate proof of its hunting prowess. 25 million years ago, this was a flat plain near a river where horses, camels and rhinos gathered to drink. Fierce carnivores, such as hyenodons and saber-toothed cats, were also drawn here. It was the perfect spot to ambush and kill the unwary prey animals. In 1998, Dr. Sundell found the mangled skeletons of seven miniature camels jumbled together. All the bones had been gnawed and six were missing their hind quarters. In theory, they could have been the victims of several predators, like the hyenodon or early saber-toothed cats. But when Dr. Sundell matched up the teeth from White River's meat eaters with the bite marks on the camel's bones, only one fitted. Bite marks alone don't prove these camels were killed by an entelodont, but where the bite marks are might be a clue. On the camels, I show they were bitten in the back of the skull and at the top of the neck. He gets next to that prey and he tries to get a punctured wound through the cranium. Dr. Sundell believes this is the mark of a true predator, which kills before it eats. And hundreds of miles away, in Ohio, there's more evidence that entelodonts could have hunted. Evidence from a scientific journey no one's ever taken before. Inside an entelodonts 30 million year old head. At Ohio University, anatomist Larry Whitmer uses a CT scan to electronically model the brain surfaces of prehistoric animals. When he modeled his first entelodont brain, he noticed something unusual. This animal's eye sockets face right back out at us. What that tells us is that this animal almost certainly had binocular vision, meaning the visual fields overlapped, which allowed them to have some depth perception. Larry Whitmer believes Entelodont's eyes help to identify it as a predator. There's a decent chance that this animal has binocular vision as a predatory adaptation to actually spot prey and actually judge their distances, which you might actually expect an ambush predator to have. So it could actually jump at the right speed and the right distance in order to capture its prey. But Entelodont's bizarre bioengineering doesn't inspire confidence that it could run and jump. Its body bones are light compared with its massive skull. But in fact, entelodonts easily carried their enormous heads without tipping over, using powerful packs of muscle bulging from the top of the spine to the legs and from the back of the head to the tail. The animal's head 
was cantilevered out in front of its body with these ligaments that ran from these spines down to the skull. It had full muscle all along either side here, and it had muscles coming from the sternum up to the jaw down here. Massive muscles carried its oversized head. But to bring down a camel, it would also have to run fast. And that's when the Entelodont's agile, lightweight body may have paid off. There's just one problem. When a predator catches its prey, it relies on its claws to grab it and bring it down. Armed with only cloven hooves, there is no way the Entelodont could have captured a fleeing camel. Or is there? It must have been doing something right, because there's compelling evidence that plenty of large mammals ended up as an entelodont's lunch. Well, it looks like there's a lot of bones coming out along here, and right here we have a really large uh, limb bone. And we found evidence that entelodonts have bitten into all sorts of bones, including rhinoceros bones. They've been biting into camels. We found evidence that they are biting into the long bones of rhinos. So the bite so, mark that we see are these two. This would be... Kent Sandell believes White River's camel skulls reveal how a cloven-hooved predator captured its prey. He runs up. He gets next to that other prey and he tries to get a punctured wound through the cranium or into the very back of the neck. And then the long snout that I move around. Entelodont expert Scott Foss disagrees with Kent Sundell's scenario. I, I, can get close enough to. I doubt an entelodont used its teeth in order to capture other prey. It probably used its larger bulk and ability to accelerate, to just run into the animal, knock it over. Once I had that animal knocked over, then the teeth can go into business, then the jaw goes into business, and it could crush whatever it went into. And it probably bit the animal right there in the head. Entelodont had all the tools necessary to kill prey animals. But there is more to the job of hunting than just the kill. A top flight predator must have the ability to find and ambush its quarry. To understand this part of the process, science needs a fossilized window into an entelodont's world. What would we see if we could follow in an entelodont's 30 million year old footsteps? At a fossil site in Nebraska, that's exactly what scientists have done. And these footsteps have led them on the trail of the creature's hunt for food. Northwest Nebraska, home to Toadstool Geologic Park, one of America's more remote tourist destinations, and a treasure trove for anyone fascinated by life's ancient past. Okay, here's our heel pad. Mm -hmm. Toe, toe, center hoof, which bears most of the weight, the middle toe. So that makes this a very nice rhinoceros print. 30 million years ago, these solid rocks were muddy stream banks, where migrating animals left their footprints, still preserved in toadstools rocks. Well, once we get it clean, it's a very nice rhino. Weigh in anywhere around five, six, seven hundred pounds. Dave Nixon has spent over 25 years analyzing the fossilized animal tracks of Toadstool Park. On the first slabs over there. He pours water on 30 million year old tracks 
to make them more visible. He can then interpret the animal's behavior. And he's walking at a deliberate pace, but not excited until he gets to this point. He starts to become stuck in the mud and shows quite a bit of emotion here because he really kicks. <laughs> lands here and he's out of the mud but he puts another leap in and the third bound takes him out of our exposure and we're seeing excitement if not fear and if you're a herbivore somebody always wants you for lunch the rocks reveal that something was following the rhinos we also have some smaller tracks. They look really tiny until you realize they're the tips of the toes. And what we have is an entelodont. The entelodont tracks at Toadstool Park give experts like Dave Nixon an unparalleled opportunity to understand how these creatures might have hunted. Because on that day, 30 million years ago, entelodonts weren't the only animals following the rhinos. And we have a set of carnivore tracks over here. These are smaller, and there are some claw marks on the inside. And we have another set right here. That carnivore may have been a hyenodon. 30 million years ago, Hyenodon was one of the top carnivores in North America. Its powerful jaws could pin down any prey animal. Then its razor-like teeth would finish the kill. But it also had the patience to track the prey over long distances. The carnivores are following the herd animals who go through first and fairly close. They'd be relatively on the heels of the group. Mysteriously, the tracks also reveal that the entelodonts were letting the competition get closer to the prey. They're following the main herd, uh, but they're not as close in time. Why would a hungry entelodont on the trail of a meal allow another predator to rush in for the kill? The answer may lie in the most puzzling evidence of all. What's interesting, the rhinos are going that way, and the entelodonts are running at a, about a 45 degree angle to the rhino trail. Zigzagging seems a strange path to take if the hyenodon was closing in on the prey. But some experts believe entelodonts might have had a very good reason to zigzag. A reason revealed by a CAT scan. When anatomist Larry Whitmer modeled the surface of an entelodont's brain, one exceptionally large nerve cluster got his attention. The size of these things right here, and what these are are nerves that are actually bringing sensory information in from the snout. This was no bloodhound, but it still had a very respectable sense of smell. And th this smelling apparatus here certainly would have been, would have been uh, well adapted to pick up the smell of a carcass. And that could explain why the Toadstool Park entelodont zigzagged while following the rhinos and hyenodon. Zigzagging could have helped its nose track the smell of a kill. It's searching. If, say, something's here or here, as you go around it, as the wind brought the scent to you, you'd be able to basically triangulate in and find it. So if you were, the wind's from this direction, and you're upwind, you'd miss it. But as you came this way, you'd be downwind and catch it, and you could double back. It 
puts his nose up in the wind, it catches the scent, and then it's gonna start zigzagging along, walking from one side of the riverbank to the other till it picks up a smell, and then it'll start zeroing in on it. And by moving from side to side, it's able to pick up changes in that smell and zero in which direction it wants to go. How do we know this behavior? Because animals with good smell do that today. Modern predator behavior could provide crucial clues as to how the entelodont lived. There's no doubt that this 30 million year old battle tank was built to kill, but it may have let others do the killing and then moved in to take possession. One of the strategies we often see that takes place is where one animal will chase another one off of a carcass. We see this at Yellowstone National Park, where wolves will bring down an elk, and a grizzly bear will chase off the wolves because it's bigger, it's nastier. This might have happened to the hyenodon at Toadstool Park. The hyenodon has run down and killed an exhausted rhino and is feasting on the carcass until the pig crashes the party. The razor-jawed beast goes from fearsome predator to underdog. The hyenodon might get in a few blows, but the entelodont's bulk would overpower its rival. Entelodont had the tools to take any carcass it wanted. I can't think of any other carnivore that uh, might stand up to it. Some experts argue that this is the true secret of the creature's success. An Entelodont could hunt, but it didn't need to be a full-time predator. Instead, it let true predators do the hunting and killing, and then stole the fruits of their labor. Stealing food from a hyenodont, even if it meant getting into a battle with a hyenodont, would probably take a lot less energy than having to hunt for food and kill food on its own. If scavenging was its lifestyle, the entelodont's complex bioengineering doesn't look so strange. Entelodont had the eyes of a hunter, the nose of a scavenger, the front teeth of a meat-eating carnivore, and the back teeth of a plant-eating herbivore. It may have evolved from a plant-eater into an omnivore, a creature that could eat whatever was available in a radically changing world. And so in reality, what this animal ate was anything it wanted. That's part of the reason why these animals were as successful as they were for as long as they were on the planet. The Entelodont's success was about to be tested by an ever-evolving planet. The Earth was growing cooler and the landscape was changing. Some of the Entelodont's fiercest rivals would not survive, but the pig from hell was about to show it could withstand the test of evolution by getting bigger. Twenty-five million years ago, Entelodont reigned supreme. It roamed the North American badlands, eating everything, fearing nothing, taking any food it wanted. Well, we're talking about the biggest, meanest animal that ever walked the badlands, and was one of the most ferocious animals that probably ever walked the earth. Nothing could stop the Entelodont from dominating their world for millions of years to come. Nothing, that is, except planet Earth. 25 million years ago, the time known as the Miocene began. The Earth grew even colder, and once again, North America began to change. 
the trend towards drying, a more arid environment continued, and you see woodlands become less frequent, become more scattered, spotty, confined along rivers. So you're talking about an open grassland environment very similar to what we think of the Great Plains today. The fossil record reveals that as plant foods grew more scarce, mass extinctions began. Survival depended on traveling long distances to find something to eat. One of the selective factors that we see going on is animals becoming larger because it enables them to cover larger distances to find the food resources that they need to survive. And that meant that predators were confronted by a life or death problem. Now, the animals they hunted were bigger, faster, and much harder to kill. It's like an arms race. If the prey become much larger, they become too big for carnivores to handle, and so the carnivores have to get larger in order to be able to feed on these larger prey items. Some predators, such as hyenodon, couldn't meet the challenge. After 10 million years as North America's apex hunter, it disappeared from the fossil record, and that put entelodont's survival on the line. When the predator is gone, the scavenger is now in danger. The scavenger now needs to adjust its lifestyle. And if the scavenger isn't very flexible, it's gonna have a difficult time. And in fact, the so-called pig from hell disappeared from the fossil record at about the same time. But this species wasn't gone. Entelodonts evolved to rule the North American plains with a vengeance. This pig hadn't become extinct, it had supersized. This new version stood over two meters tall and was four to five times the size of its predecessor. It still had a battle tank body and a sprinter's legs. Its skull and jaws were now even more massive and more intimidating. It was bigger than a modern bison. The experts call it Dino Hyas, a name meaning terrible hog. Terrible enough to earn a nickname of its own, the Terminator Pig. Dino Hyas. This is the monster of monsters. This is the beast of beast. The skull alone is almost a meter long. This thing could bite through anything. The canines are this big around. They're just an enormous animal. And what is it doing? The answer lies at Agate Springs, Nebraska, one of the few places in North America where Dino Hyas fossils are found. 24 million years ago, this place was a watering hole, an oasis in the arid sea of grass. Hundreds of animals, many of them rhinos, gathered here to drink. And as the drier, colder planet killed off their food supply, they came here to die, making Agate Springs a paradise for predators and a favorite haunt of the Terminator pig. This thing was eating the big animals. We think that this guy was specializing on the large rhinos that lived at the time, on the calicotheres that lived here at Agate Springs. This is a limb bone from a calicotheer, and in it we have a bunch of bite marks made by either a predator or a scavenger. The entelodont premolar, one of the teeth you find just behind the canine, appears to match these holes very well. When its crushing jaws bit into some of the Miocene's biggest mammals, 
Dino Hyas was chewing on more than meat. But the important part of this bone is this end here where it's been broken off. The animal bit through the bone, sheared it off, and then had access to the nutritious marrow that was inside. Bone marrow is one of the most nutritious foods an animal can eat. And in times of mass extinction, it would have been a prime source of nutrition. As the Miocene climate change killed off thousands, a diet from scavenged bone marrow may have allowed the Terminator pig to thrive. The long bones contain marrow, which is good for several years after an animal dies. So think of it as canned fat that would be available during a drought. Uh, so the pigs could still find food after a massive die off, even if, if they're looking at mostly skeletons. The Terminator pig was the pinnacle of Entelodont's evolution. This beast had supersized to survive the Miocene's challenge and it very nearly succeeded, but not quite. Because in this new world, survival would ultimately depend on a skill set even the Terminator pig didn't possess. 20 million years ago, a new monster predator arrived in North America, the bear dog. The Miocene Epoch. 20 million years ago. In what's now northwest Nebraska, Dino Hyas, aka the Terminator pig, is settling down to eat. The chances are good that its meal will be interrupted. With its huge size, it could handle just about any threat to its dinner, except a threat it had never seen before the bear dog. A recent arrival from Asia, this savage, bone-crushing beast wouldn't back down from any fight. The bear dog migrated from its homeland in China and Mongolia across the Bering Strait to North America about 23 million years ago. Just about the time that North America's top predator, the hyenodon, suddenly disappeared. Scientists suspect that it wasn't a coincidence. They certainly were probably much better predators in lots of ways compared to Hyenodon. And so it's a reasonable expectation that they probably drove the last of Hyenodon to extinction in North America. With Hyenodons gone from North America, the bear dogs faced off with their only remaining competition, the Terminator pig. Dino Hyas relied on its massive size and killing jaws, two advantages its ancestors had once deployed against Hyenodon. But the bear dogs counterattacked with new evolutionary weapons. Its first weapon was speed. With its heavily muscled, top-heavy body, Dino Hyas could be a fast runner in short bursts. But on the vast open plains, the bear dog's bioengineering was perfectly suited for long distance pursuit of prey that was becoming much harder to catch. When you look at the skeleton of this animal, it's a much more sophisticated, much faster running animal we see longer legs in the horses, longer legs in the camels. So if it came to running down prey items, this animal would have had an advantage. Its next weapon was its teeth. Entelodonts ate well because their jaws and teeth could tear flesh and crush bone to extract its highly nutritious marrow. But bear dogs could do these things just as well. In fact, even better. It's a great animal at biting bone, eating bone, uh, crushing it. And it also has a, a set of teeth that are sharper than any entelodonts. Entelodonts, for example, 
wear the tips of their huge canines off, and they're not actually very good for puncturing, probably because they spent so much time crushing bone with them. This animal never does that. Its, it's, its canine teeth are always much sharper. It also has better slashing teeth in its jaw than any entelodont had. So in many ways, it did a better job what entelodonts had done than entelodonts ever did. The bear dogs could outrun and outbite the Terminator pig. And they had a third weapon the entelodont never possessed. The deadliest power ever to evolve on Earth. Bear dogs actually had much more advanced brains. Brains that were much more like what we see with modern animals. So where these entelodonts had relatively archaic, simple, smooth brains, these bear dogs actually had a much more expanded neocortex that was more highly folded. These were more sophisticated animals. Instead of developing brain power, entelodonts had responded to the Miocene challenge by supersizing into Dinohyus. For almost 20 million years, they had ruled their world by brute force. But no more. From now on, brains, not brawn, would decide who won and who lost nature's battle to survive. The mammalian world was fully caught up in this neural arms race. That arms race was starting to take place, and these entelodonts apparently weren't taking part in that. That may have actually put these animals at something of a disadvantage. This was an animal that almost certainly was driven mostly by, by instinct, with fairly predictable, stereotyped uh, responses. This was not a clever animal. In combat, Dino Hyas would have been bigger and stronger, but brain power could have given bear dogs the decisive advantage. Today, intelligent predators like wolves make up for their smaller size by hunting in packs to execute a creative plan of attack. Bear dogs might have followed the same strategy against Dino Hyas. It's very difficult for Dinohyus to compete with the bear dogs. With a pack of bear dogs, even a large Dinohyus would have a difficult time chasing them away from a kill. These smaller, less powerful, but more clever animals potentially were able to actually steal kills away from Dinohyus. But they actually could have used different kinds of techniques fooling Dino Hyas, being able to lead it away, or to actually even take on uh, Dino Hyas itself um, in, in, in actual combat. So this is a more advanced animal in terms of its teeth, in terms of its speed, in terms of its overall body size, and especially in terms of its intelligence. This thing has a much larger brain for its body size than does any entelodont. So this animal had entelodonts beaten almost every way you can think of. Within a few million years, after bear dogs arrived in North America, they had squeezed Dinohyus out. Its favorite food, the Calicothea, was also extinct. Without this meal to sustain its own massive bulk, the Terminator pig was forced to compete directly with bear dogs for smaller prey. And that meager food source wasn't enough. The supersizing that had once guaranteed success was now a fatal flaw. Eventually, it got to the point where it is no longer advantageous to keep getting bigger because you reach a point of diminishing returns that the amount of food you get by stealing from other animals does not compensate for your needs to maintain a population. Unable to get the calories it needed, the Terminator pig 
became the last in Teledont. So if your prey goes extinct, you know, you're likely to go extinct as well. Just getting large is not a good idea for the future. Despite its rapid demise, Entelodont was an evolutionary success. It dominated its environment for nearly 20 million years. It had the ability and intelligence to either hunt, scavenge, or forage, allowing it to survive on any available food source. This behavior is now the norm for more modern omnivores, like bears and humans. And some think a bit of Entelodont's predatory instinct still lives on. When I was a kid growing up on a farm, I was always told, don't fall down the pig pen, they'll eat you. But the Entelodont's living legacy isn't what fascinates the experts. Science is unraveling its secrets. Nothing else quite like it has ever walked the Earth. All we know is that this strangest of creatures, this toothy beast with an appetite for destruction, dominated its brutal, dangerous world for tens of millions of years. A powerful tribute to the Entelodont, perhaps the most unusual and the most mysterious of all prehistoric predators.